God is good and he is at work even now in this place. I'm going to ask that you close your eyes for a moment. I want you to hear some words. I want you to think about this. Please bring to your mind someone that you know embodies this word. Happy. Can you find that person in your mind? What about fortunate? What about profitable? Can you see that person? These are shades of the word that is used in the first line of the psalm we're going to look at. When it declares that a person is blessed. If you are someone who knows Jesus Christ personally, you are blessed. You should be happy in that. Not because of some emotional ascent, but because God has done for you that which you cannot do for yourself. You are fortunate because were it not for God choosing you, you would never choose him. You are profitable. You are prosperous. Not the way the world counts prosper in money and cars and stuff. But you prosper every day when you walk in the steps with the Spirit. As your eyes are closed, even now, hear these words from God. How blessed. How prosperous. How to be envied. That's another way this word can be looked at. People look at you in the silence and the quietness of the way the Spirit moves in your life. And deep in their heart they say, why can't I be like that? What she got, I don't have. You are blessed. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Nor stand in the path of of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Do you hear that? There's an order. You begin walking with someone, and when you walk with them, not only do you share their time, but you also share their ideas. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of that. And after you walk with them a while, you stand. You stand with them, and you submit to them. You release your authority for the guidance of your life to the people around you. And they begin to pull you in directions, oftentimes not toward God. You submit. You check your brain out and you let somebody else pour into it. And then you sit with them. And now that you're sitting, you're probably not going to get up. You're stuck. How blessed is the one who does not follow this path. But his delight, his desire, his passion is in the law of the Lord. And upon that law, he meditates both day and night. He thinks about it. He stews over it. He wrestles with it because he wants to know what it is to be a man after God's heart. And he meditates on this nonstop. It's a continual process. Problem, God has a solution. Question, God has an answer. Problem, issue, whatever it is, God knows the path he has for you and he declares it to be a good path. The Bible even describes at night he will speak to you in your dreams. He would be like a tree firmly planted and rooted and tended. That word actually is in there as well. Not just the tree got planted and left. No, the tender is there. He takes care of it. 
He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water where the life is, where the power is, which yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he will prosper. Where are we? We're on a journey following somebody. We're walking with somebody's counsel. If today, as you think about these words and the Spirit touches you and causes you to realize the counsel you're listening to is not taking you in toward God. Maybe the counsel you're giving is not godly. It is time to agree with God that what we are doing in the flesh is not doing the kingdom of God. And we need to call upon him now and ask him, since we've called his spirit into this place, since we would desire to worship him, will we listen to him? The psalmist declares today, if you would hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Do not harden your heart. Bring to the Lord now that which is on your mind. He already knows, but he requires us to agree with him, to say the same thing. And that really is the word, confession. Let us gather silently before the king. Lord, who, who spoke worlds into being, who created everything that we see. And you are so beyond it, your word even declares you stoop down to look into your creation. <laughs> you are the infinite God who makes all things simply by speaking them into existence. But you're also the personal God who knows us Every part of us, every weakness, every failure, every problem we've ever had, you know them. And you know that if it is our attempt to reach you, we will never do that. But you love us. And you have, as your word declared, demonstrated your love toward us. You haven't just talked about it. You did something about it. You demonstrated your love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I have to remember that I need to take the us out and put my name there. Christ died for Bruce. If there had been no one else, he'd have come for me. I'd have been the one that beat him. I'd have been the one that drove the nails into him. I'd have been the one that spit on him and pulled out his beard and placed the crown of thorns upon his head. I'd have been the one. And he came for me as you did, Lord, for everybody else. I don't have words to describe what I owe you and what I know you are worth to me. But oftentimes I fail you. I failed you already today and I'll keep on failing you because I'm broken and I live in a broken world. But you have promised that not only will you redeem me, but you will restore Everything that was lost, everything that was lost, Jesus has replaced. Everything. Father, change my life and let it be consecrated, set apart, sanctified, Lord, to you. My words, my mouth, my days, my times. I don't have to stay the way I was. I can be all in Christ. And I praise you, Father. Because you have done this for me. Hallelujah. My sins are gone. I have been set free. 
Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Psalm 34 says this about us. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. Fear. Now, sometimes I guess that means shaking in your shoes, but when you hold God in high regard and in, in, in revere him, that's what this word is about, is realizing that he is God Almighty, and you are a creature, part of his creation, but you have been made in his image that you might have this relationship with him, this association with him. And this word encamped literally means a garrison, an army surrounds you. Can't see him, can you? Don't worry. He promised they're there. You are guarded. He sets an encampment around those who fear him and rescues them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed. Oh, there's that word again. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, God, you are our hiding place. We have no one else. And we are so thankful that you are there and that you are the rewarder of those who diligently seek after you. Our responsive song is belong to you. May we hear these words.